Thank you very much, Sarah, and to Russ and everyone at NFLRC for putting together this series on assessment. And also, I was um, impressed with the other instructors and what they've put together so far as well. Um, everything that you've been learning so far in the other courses are going to be directly apl applicable to what I'm going to be talking about today, tools and technologies for online language assessment. And um, so my name is Eric Voss. I work at Northeastern University in Boston, where the sun is shining. And so um, let's take a look at the next slide. Mm -hmm. There we go. So I want to start off with some definitions, uh, tools and technology. Those can be defined rather broadly or they can be defined in our context. Uh, if we take a look at uh, how um, Greg Kessler defines authoring tools, this are software programs that assist in developing a test to be delivered by a computer or online. And they can, be, they can include embedded media, automated scoring, feedback, and also ar um, archiving data. Of performance. Technology can be defined in many different ways. Uh, most of the time we think of technology as information technology. And so if we take a look at just a definition from Merriam-Webster, we have to look down for the second uh, definition here to be something closer to what we're looking for, a manner of accomplishing a task, especially in using technical processes, methods, and knowledge. So for this presentation, um, I'm going to be focusing on tools that allow instructors and learners to develop personalized assessments to support language learning. So um, I won't be focusing so much on standardized testing or tools that are too complex or too expensive. And so our goal is to find tools and technologies that help us provide detailed personalized reporting to guide language learning. So when we look at technology and language assessment. There are two aspects that we need to think about. Uh, the efficiency, much of the technology that we use today um, is, helps us uh, be, become more efficient in our language assessment, but also it should intersect with other factors in the educational process for language learners. So uh, I posed these few questions here just to get us to start thinking about our connection between what we're assessing and what we are teaching and the role technology plays in this. So first of all, take for a moment and think about this first question, what technology do you use to teach or assess language? And also, how do you use that technology to teach and assess language? And again, how do you use that technology to teach and assess language? And that's an important part because many of the ways that we assess language are similar to the ways that we teach language. And the information that we get from these methods, these tasks, inform language learning for either the student or the instructor or both. So a couple of caveats to think about when we're looking at tools we should be selecting the right tool for the job. And that means if we are teaching communicative language approach, we should be looking for tools that match that teaching method. Or if we're looking at measuring and teaching uh, knowledge, uh, then we could look at tools and technologies that help us assess selected. Can you see me okay? Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can see in here just fine, thank you. Okay, great. Uh, so selecting the right tool for what we are trying to measure. Um, also, technology should be transparent. So if there are technical difficulties, that could get in the way of the student perform, uh, performing well or understanding what to do. And so in this presentation, I'd like to go through some considerations for the authoring and development section. So what degree of agency is uh, needed or available to create personalized assessments? Uh, delivery and scoring of these assessments. So what type of resources and technology is available, are available to deliver, collect data. And then throughout the process, the reporting. And the reporting is uh, important for the detailed personalized feedback, again, to guide the language learning. 
And then finally, I'll end the presentation with some emerging, te emerging technologies that are too expensive right now, but they are uh, a works in progress and they're coming along and they hold exciting uh, ideas for the future. So first of all, when we think about test development, and we usually look for something that we can use, we look at for our resources, what do we have available, how much will it cost, and ideally we'd like to create an assessment that is, has a low cost, it's high quality, and it's fairly quick, quick to uh, implement, to administer, and also quick to grade. Grading takes up a large part of our time as instructors. And all of these three overlap, and this is similar to a concept used in project management, that um, we'd like these three uh, to be characteristics of our assessment. However, we can only, in practicality, identify two of these, and so we have to give up one of them. So think to yourself, which one uh, would you care to give up if you were developing a test? Would you like to have a, a fast test? that is low cost, but it may not be high quality, or an inexpensive test that's very high quality, but it's very slow to administer and it takes a long time to score. Uh, another way to look at this is, uh, is it fast, good, or cheap? Three other words that we could use instead of speed, cost, or quality. So, if we look at some of the authoring systems that are available, authoring tools, LMS, and uh, we've heard about Canvas in a previous presentation, um, there are quite a few out there. And so when you're thinking about what tool should I use, what technology should I use, think about what you're trying to measure and does that authoring system, does that, that uh, tool fit what you are trying to do rather than identify technology and see how you can use it. Choose the right tool for the job. Also, you get what you pay for. So there are quite a few free tools out there and they usually come with advertisements or may not uh, have all of the bells and whistles, the features that you need. So it depends on your resources um, and the institution that you work for. So when you're looking at the tools, uh, it's important to look at what item types are offered through those tools. Here we have um, selected response and open-ended response examples. So selected response where there's a closed answer, true or false, the, the instructor may be selecting, uh, the, the learner, test taker may be selecting an answer. And then we get to the open-ended responses, usually short-ended responses or sometimes longer essay responses where the student types directly on the screen. And these were emerging item types back in 2001. Today, we have different types of item types because of the technologies that have been developed recently and the um, internet and web 2.0 and HTML5. This is an example from a a uh, place or a screening task rather. Let's take a look at this one is uh, this is a reading task and checking grammar. So if we look at the instructions, um, click on the extra words as you go and they will become highlighted. This is just a, an image so you won't be able to click on this. But if you're interested you could check out the link and try it yourself. This is an open uh, example. Um, so the way that this works is that the student would click on a word and it would highlight the word that does not belong in the sentence. And this is, seems more technologically advanced and more modern, but I want you to think to yourself for a moment, what else is this measuring that a selected response from this earlier page may or may not be doing, that may or may not be measuring. So if we take a look at number one, testing has, long been an integral part of the language instruction. This has true or false, it could have different words and this learner would need to select which word is not appropriate for that sentence. Of course, that's not the same type of item as the here. Uh, so with the new technologies, we have different item types, but they're measuring different, uh, different abilities and different skills. And in this case, we have the ability to have a, an authentic, cohesive text 
uh, longer text. And this is also similar to what students may be doing when they are learning or when they are working on a computer for another purpose. Here you have a highlighting, which many students are now doing with text. And so it simulates what students are doing in real life, which makes it more authentic for the learner. I'm not going to go through all of these item types, but if you'd like to spend some time taking a look at different item types, uh, OWL's, um, the OWL website, it's a test management system, has examples of the item types that they offer. And they are item types that let the um, test developer collect not only text, but also voice. Uh, the test taker can click on an image, so their location items as well. And so I've put the link at the top for you to explore the samples. When you're developing a test, it's important to think about what item types you want to include in the test, if they are available through technology, and if they match what you're doing through a learning task. So right now I'd like to take a look at an example of Google Forms. This is part of the Google Suite or G Suite. And this is a very useful way of creating tests. So um, if you could type this URL into the chat for everyone to see and use, what I'd like everyone to do now is to go on to this site and complete this quiz. While you're doing that, I'm going to go back and find my chat. Uh, are you still seeing my whole screen? Yes, I'm seeing your whole screen. Okay, uh, let me see. I'm going to stop sharing and restart this while everyone's taking the quiz. Didn't share. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this should be the quiz that you found through that. URL and please go ahead and answer the questions. Okay, so this is the instructor view. This is a quiz that I created using Google Forms. I'm just going to walk through this and look at some of the features. So, so far we have 26 responses, 27 are collected. And there are a couple of ways to see the responses. Uh, here we can take a look at aggregated responses here to see how well the overall cl class is doing. Or you can take a look at each of the <laughs> now I'm giving you the answer. Each of the items individually. So we see that those with distractors, they were distracting. Okay. And another way then to look at the responses is in an experience. A spreadsheet here and this collects the date and time that the student completed the assessment and their answers. 
So this assessment also then has the complete score. And it does not show you which of these were correct or incorrect. There are add-ons that you can um, install to show you which has, uh, the, is the correct answer or not. So this is one way of looking at it. And you can look at the responses by question or by each individual who has completed the assessment that you can go through and it takes the time and you could print. So I'm just going to go through a few features on how this was developed because this is similar to uh, survey software. Survey software can be used to develop quizzes as well. However, uh, if we go into settings here, this icon here, we can see quizzes. And this is what we select to make the survey a quiz. And then we have other options here. We can release the grade immediately or after you as the instructor have reviewed the responses. And the respondent can see missed questions or correct answers if you leave these selected. You can also collect email addresses or a name for the student to put in their name so you know who has completed the assessment. Of course, that was not done on this one, so all of your responses are anonymous. That's not something you'd like from a, a test. So something like this is very simple to put together, simple to use, and simple to collect responses. And you can allow the students to see whether their answers were, answers were correct immediately or later. This can be used for formative or summative assessment. And if the students see their scores immediately, this could be used for online courses. Or if you were to do this in a classroom, in a hybrid classroom, the students could look at the answers that they got incorrect and discuss them to agree on what the correct answer is. There's an add-on here called Form Limiter so that you can set the date when it is uh, the date and time for the assessment to close if you were to sign this um, at a time that doesn't match with your uh, course course uh, time or if you're in an online course um, the time can be uh, set so that the students only have a certain period of time to complete the assessment all right and it allows you to change the different formats and colors to match. This integrates very well with Google Classroom. Google Classroom uh, is an on, the online LMS, and so Google Classroom would collect the uh, scores and keep track of them so you could see the progress for each of the assessments for your course. If you're not using an LMS such as Moodle or Canvas or Blackboard, all right. So you saw that we had just the, uh, if we use the spreadsheet, we have answers from our test. One way that we can use technology is to evaluate the questions in the test itself. This is a very useful site, languagetesting.info, has a lot of information about language testing. But I'd like to draw your attention to a link in the site that has Excel templates score converter, distractor analysis, item facility. So if you'd like to explore the evaluation of the test development a little bit further, I would recommend taking a look at this site. And this, here's an example of what it can do. So if the answers from the test were in ABC format or other format other than zeros and ones, there is a template that can help you to convert those to ones and zeros, so correct and incorrect. And then that could be used for different statistical procedures. Or you can use uh, the responses and the distractor analysis template, for example, to take a look at how many students were choosing the correct answer and how many were choosing the distractors. And if there's a very low number choosing the distractors, well, either your test is, or your students are very smart, you've taught them well, or maybe that distractor is not distracting as well as you'd like it to be. And this would be an indication that you could take a look at improving the test question. All right, let's take a look at another type of test. This is a computer adaptive test. And this uses an algorithm that is too complex for most of us to 
to implement. So if the student completes the test, uh, the question and gets it correct, then it presents the test taker with a question that is more difficult and it continues throughout this process until it finds the level uh, that is most appropriate for that uh, test taker. And so some of the benefits of this approach are the students can work at their own pace and it's level appropriate. So they're not completing a lot of easy test answer, test tasks, um, immediate feedback because it usually is administered in a shorter period of time. And now with the technology that we have, the students can be presented with listening or video or images. And so it's gone beyond our traditional text-based assessments. So another question, how does technology used to assess language change the way language is assessed? Or think about this question, how might it change the way we interpret the meaning of a test score? So for example, if we're asking our students to complete a reading test on a smaller tablet or a, even a phone, since the screen is smaller, there's going to be more score, uh, scrolling and it's going to be different reading than if they were presented the reading passage on a larger 11, 13 inch screen. Or maybe it's not so different. If more of our activities are on smaller tablets and phones, students are reading the information on these smaller devices, is that an issue for language assessment? Automated scoring is something that is uh, in demand. We all like the essays to be scored and the speech samples to be scored. The goal, however, is for the computers to score them as similar to a human rater as possible. There are a lot of key words that you may hear, uh, natural language processing, speech processing, artificial intelligence, machine learning, automated essay scoring. These holds uh, promise for assessment in the future. However, it's not as easy to assess language by the computer to assess language and particularly to assess it as a human would assess language. Some of the more practical tools we can look at are Chrome extensions, for example, Grammarly, where you can embed this program into your web browser and anytime you type, it will give you feedback if you misspell a word or if there is a grammar error and alert you while you are actually producing language. A couple other tools here, Read and Write and Fluency Tutor, are produced by a company called Text Help. These began as accessibility tools to help those learners with, uh, that maybe have trouble seeing or trouble hearing but they're actually very helpful for language learners. And Fluency Tutor, for example, allows the instructor to present the students with a text that they choose. And the students can then hear the text read aloud by different voices that they choose. This one is uh, US Samantha's voice. Then after the student has listened enough, they can record themselves reading the passage. Once they've recorded themselves, they send that sample to the instructor and the instructor can listen to their language production and mark up the words using different categories to give feedback to the student. This can then all be tracked within this system and you can see their words per minute and see their, the time it takes to read the passage, an ongoing score, and other information. And Text Help has partnered with Google, so this could be implemented and integrated into the Google Classroom as well. Other sites are more readily available. They're free, such as languagetool.org, which allows real time feedback for grammar and text as seen in this screenshot. These are grammar checkers, vocabulary checkers, spelling checkers. There are also tools such as turnitin.com or the free version Paper Raider 
that will check for plagiarism to see how much of the text was taken from another source. Uh, they're looking for original work as well as checking for grammar and vocabulary. Wordandphrase.info is a helpful site. And this has, uh, this has a, a two parts to it, frequency list to explore vocabulary, but also it can analyze text for vocabulary. So let's take a look at an example here, the word and phrase.info. And I'm just going to pull up a sample here. So learner one, this could be a sample text. The student can paste their own text in here or an instructor can paste the text that a student has developed or created and search. And there it goes. Over here on the right, you see color-coded text to show you how many of the words are frequently used words and less frequently, frequently used words. The yellow should be uh, less frequently used words. However, if you take a look closely, they're actually misspelled words. Challenge is missing an N. Regret, sounds like regrets. Um, develop with an E. And so this is one way that the student can take a look at what they've written before they turn it in to identify uh, different words uh, issues, so, such as spelling. If they click on it, it's not found in this corpus. If they look at, click on another word that is, they can explore this word further and see how it's used in actual language. And on the left, it gives synonyms. Maybe they'd like to choose a different word than the one they've selected. And the higher the number, the less frequently used that word is. Okay. Uh, we heard uh, about rubrics and we saw a demonstration of Rubistar. And so I'd like to show another example of a rubric uh, tool that's called Orange Slice. And for this one, we use a, an add-on for Google. So I'm bringing up a sample student paper. And you can create your rubric using Rubistar or any tool that you'd like. And you can paste it right into the work and make sure this says rubric categories. This is one that was developed for writing. Then using an add-on, orange slice, it identifies that rubric in the text. And then over here, it converts that rubric into uh, tools over here. So you can take a look at central idea, click on that and it brings up use of passage and development. And you can see that these match the rubric that I've embedded in this document. And this is a quick way to assign ratings. You can also give textual feedback as well, either directly on the rubric or click on feedback here. You can give textual feedback to the student. And one nice thing about this is once that you've finished, click on finish, See if I finished all of these categories. Process the grade. course when technology does not work. So I'll tell you what this should do. Once you've gone through the process, it will highlight the cells that you have selected when you've gone through that process. And it will place the grade at the top numerically. And it will change the title of this sample paper with the grade at the front. So you can keep track of those that you have scored and the students have access to it to see that it has been graded and their feedback. 
All right, let's continue. So if we take a look around, most of our students are growing up with tablets and phones. And if you look around in your daily life, you see people on their phone all the time. So this is part of the mobile first movement and companies are designing applications mobile first before they consider how it would look on a laptop or a desktop. And this is important for learning and assessment as well. There are many more applications that are mobile first and also game based. And so I'd like to share with you a, a tool called Quizlet. And this has a desktop version, but I'd take, like to take a look at the mobile version. And this is some screenshots from my phone. And so this has, if you look at the left, it says allow notifications. One of the advantages of having learning and assessments on mobile devices is that they can send the user notification to make it more personalized. The student's not always carrying around their tablet or their laptop and that it's open. Uh, they will have phones or tablets available. And so this Quizlet is a flashcard uh, tool, but their new feature is the learn feature. And this uses a machine learning and adaptive mode so that the student, as they're learning, receives immediate feedback. The questions will get harder and harder as they go along, and we'll keep track of which of the, of the words they got correct or incorrect. And here's an example of some of the feedback, uh, if they got the word correct, or if they got the word incorrect. And it gives motivational statements here, and you can see at the bottom, some feedback showing that their overall progress and each time they complete the round, how many they're studying, how many are new. And it changes the vocabulary words that are given to the student. And also the type of task, whether they have to, they have to write the word or whether they just select the word definition. And this can be developed using images or text or sound can be developed by an instructor or it can be developed by the, the language learner. Another tool that improves engagement and interaction in the classroom, and this is geared towards a physical classroom that uses technology, is Kahoot. And I have screenshots for this. So Kahoot is displayed on the screen, either a smart screen or a projector and the students use mobile device. This will work with laptops, but mobile devices um, are helpful tablets or phones. The student puts in the pin shown on the screen and their, uh, their own name. And then they see questions or images or videos and have a certain amount of time to respond with their answer. And so you, on the right shows a phone with what the student sees. They also see the screen on on the left. And so for this, it's asking how you say, what is your name in Arabic? And then the student chooses the symbol or the color. And the symbols are used for those students who have trouble seeing colors. And it gives immediate feedback. Now the feedback on the phone, you can see that it shows whether the answer is correct or incorrect. It also gives a score. And the way that this works is that two students can get the the answer correct. However, the student who answered correctly faster gets more points. And so it, you see it shows that you're in first place and this ranks the students as they go along. Because it's timed and because the students are ranked, uh, the students are excited and motivated and thinking about the answer faster than if there was a not, if this was not timed. This also has reporting for the instructor, some information. So even though the students are engaged, they're motivated, they're uh, thinking about the answer to the question, you're still collecting performance reports on them uh, behind the scenes. And so you can see their total scores, or you can see question summaries, or each individual question and how well the students did. This could be used to collect uh, data uh, on the students. It can be also, also be used if the students miss a question, such as question three, 
one person got it correct, you could stop and the students could talk to each other and talk about what the correct answer is as the learning experience uh, based on this formative assessment feedback. All right, I'd like to talk about some emerging technologies and uh, I'd like to talk about facial and gesture recognition, artificial intelligence, augmented reality, and then finally, virtual reality. These are technologies that are fairly new, but being used by many of the large companies, Google, Apple, Microsoft, Facebook. And so we find them showing up on our phones and computers and devices. Facial and gesture recognition is not something that we always assess. However, it can be beneficial in communication. There was a program developed by a PhD student at MIT called Mach, My Automated Conversation Coach. And this uses web cameras and recording devices to simulate an interview. And the student can complete this a number of times. And each time they complete the interview, it gives personalized feedback on not only their pausing speech rate type of language, but also their hand gestures, facial gestures. Are they smiling? Are they looking at the camera? And you can see this is the first attempt, second attempt, and then the purple is the third attempt, and then an overall focused feedback. So this is a way of technology capturing more than just what we think of as, as language, as writing or speaking, but also communication. Artificial intelligence is growing. And this is based on the concept of big data. So everything you do online leaves a footprint and the companies are collecting all of this information. This is used for real-time analysis. So you may think of when you, uh, simple tasks like asking Siri, and Siri gives you response. This is a narrow form of artificial intelligence. It can only respond to the questions that it's familiar with. And often when you ask, it just brings up a web page. This is what I found. But as artificial intelligence improves, we're going to see different types of feedback, such as personalized feedback, using AI, adaptive learning. So as you're using your devices, if you consider that is collecting information about your language use all the time, how you speak, what you say, what you read, what you listen to. So if you can imagine at some point you had a personalized assistant who told you at the end of the day, uh, Eric, you've been spending 80% of your time in English and only 20% of your time in French. I think you should improve, increase your time speaking French if you'd like to do, perform better on your test or even more specific feedback um, at the end of the week. It could say, um, Eric, I think that you may need to focus a little bit more on the correct uh, past tense form of to run or whatever it may give you. So this is someone who is someone, something, giving you personalized real-time feedback. And it's based on what you allow it to do and what you want it to do through personalized machine learning. This is a lot uh, more friendly than a teacher following you around all day and telling you what you should or shouldn't be doing. Augmented reality is another form of technology that is everywhere. We see it through Snapchat where people put bunny ears on themselves. And uh, even on our phones, we can write just draw messages with our fingers. So here's an example of Google Translate where it takes something in reality and alters it. So here it's translating from Russian into English. And it's, it'll be interesting to see how this is used fully in language learning and language assessment. But we can look at different perspectives on how this is used. For example, if we combine 
technologies such as Google Glass with our classroom, what would it be like for you as an instructor to put on your glasses and have the glasses to identify your students through facial recognition so you can see their names and you can see the score on the test that they just completed online immediately. You can see in real time how well they're, how well they're doing. I know I'd like this at the beginning of the class in a physical classroom to get to know their names faster. But it, like, augmented reality is a new, a new uh, type of technology that I think has great potential for language learning and language assessment in the future. Last is virtual reality. And virtual reality uses virtual goggles. So this is another type of equipment that we don't all have, but it is growing and you see them on, for sale um, most places. I bought mine in a sporting goods store, not very expensive. And these are used to simulate an experience. So let me give you a couple scenarios on how virtual reality may be used. So <clears throat> let's say, again, in a French class, if I wanted to, uh, the student to tell me about the Eiffel Tower in French, if the student first took a tour of the Eiffel Tower, they put the goggles on and were able to be there and look around. And as they looked around, they saw the Eiffel Tower as if they were there in Paris, immersed in the environment. They might have a different perspective on describing it than if they were just to describe it from a picture on a screen or a picture on a paper. It can also be used to simulate discussions or interviews. Here on the right, you'll see what it looks like. Um, for this to work, the screen is split into two views, but when you put the, your iPhone or Android phone into the Google, the goggles, it merges into one 3D image. And as you look around the room, you look around as if you were there. And so this could simulate an actual interview. Another test, a testing company I know is using these to simulate the test taking experience. Uh, sometimes anxiety is very high for some students. And so if they go through this mock experience a few times when they actually take the test, then they're more relaxed and more calm. So if you can imagine that we combine many of these technologies together, so we have a mock interview where we also have uh, cameras looking for hand gestures and speech technology, recognizing your speech and scoring it automatically, and then presenting immediate feedback, personalized feedback. This is something that uh, would be very helpful for an individual language learner and be the ultimate uh, idea in efficiency for language assessment. But I think we're still a ways away from that being realized. So to conclude, I just want to leave you with a few thoughts about selecting language tools. Uh, tools should be used, uh, selected for the appropriate test or teaching method. Uh, they should provide enough personalized, timely feedback to support language learning. Assessment tasks should match learning tasks. And um, finally, technology should be transparent. And so, we should look for tools that students are familiar using or use them enough so that they are comfortable with using that technology before they complete the assessment. All right, thank you, mahalo.